So there seems to be a lot of, I don't know if it's confusion or uncertainty, just around hiring designers today, right? Um, and that may be for a number of reasons. Maybe it's just a skill set that wasn't taught to people. Um, maybe it could be the job descriptions that are just setting up the wrong expectations from day one. Um, but I'm curious how you think people and organizations should talk to designers um, and make sure that they hire the right ones for their, their business's needs. Yeah, so, so if you want to build a great design team, you have to hire great designers. I mean, there's no, there's no way around that. You can't, you can't build a great design team without that. So the, the problem is, is that the way we have uh, learned how to hire designers has been this really poor process. I mean, it's just by copying what we see other people do and slightly modifying it, think we're somehow improving it. It's this, this evolutionary game of telephone. And what we have today is this, this mess of the hiring process in most organizations that has no clue how to hire, how to even begin to hire people. So we've been, we've been doing a lot of work on helping teams learn a better hiring process. And the, the process that we've adopted is a process that is very thoughtful, very intentional. Uh, it's called performance-based hiring. It was invented by a, a dude named uh, Lou, Lou Adler. Um, and Lou's idea uh, is that you can, you focus on what you want the person to do very specifically. And it's really interesting. So in most organizations that we go into, they have a position called designer and they create a single job description for designer and then every designer they hire they hire to that job description if they and and or maybe they've they've gone so far as to break it up and they'll have an information architect and a user researcher and the user researcher will have one job description and the information architect will have a different job description and and they'll they'll just map to those job descriptions and and but the job descriptions are are vague and they're all based on must have 3 to 5 years of experience doing information architecture or whatever it is and of course someone who has someone who has 10 years of experience could either have this intense 10 year experience where you can see their growth, or they could have spent 10 years at a job and done the exact same thing every year. So it's basically one year of experience repeated 10 times, and there's no growth. And what, what you want, what most hiring managers want, is they want someone who has grown because they're gonna need to come into this position and grow, and they're gonna need. So what you wanna do is you wanna look at comparable experience. And so what we do is we, work with teams and we focus on, okay, if we're going to hire these people, let's talk about what we want them to do. So the assignment that I give teams to start with is a process where the first thing you do before you write the job description, before you've written the job ad, before you do anything, is you write as a team, you write and agree on a thank you letter. And the thank you letter is a note in the future, usually one year after the person is hired, to that person, now we don't have a person yet, we don't know who they are, mm -hmm. but we're writing a note to that person, thanking them for their first year, and in detail, spelling out all the amazing things they did over that year. Thank you so much for the incredible year you have changed our organization. The first thing you did was you came in and you sat down and you did an inventory of everything that uh, we've designed so far, and you came up with the basics of our uh, design system. And then you worked with the development team to build out the design system and you got a pilot going with the onboarding team and they built their first tool with the design system. And you go through and you list out everything that that person did be, and you get everybody on agreement. And what happens is teams look at this and go, really, I didn't think he was gonna work on onboarding. Why would he work on onboarding for? And we yeah. have this conversation with the team and suddenly we're talking about what will this person do when they get here? Yeah. And as soon as we have agreement on that, now we can ask the question, what do we need them to already know day one to be able to pull that off? And that's what we hire for. And then, if we're having someone come in and design a design system, do we want someone who's actually designed a design system before? Mm. Or do we want someone who's gonna learn how to de design a design system? 
Either answer is okay, but we need to answer that before the first interview happens. In fact, before we write the job ad. Because the job ad needs to say, we want you to come in and learn how to create a design system. Or, we want you to come in and create a design system that is better than all the ones you've created in the past, right? We want, we're going to create the ad that way. And what you end up with is you end up with job ads that are very specific, so specific to what that position is about. Because I'm not going to hire four designers that are going to do design systems, I'm going to hire one, right? And so they're very specific to that, that someone's going to go, oh my gosh, that's like my dream job. And that everything I've done in my career has been leading up to this job, right? And they can talk to that. It's going to change the way you interview because if you know you're hiring someone who has to be able to complete a design system in the first year, you're going to look for the things that they've done in the past that do that. And what it does is it shifts the, the, the key to performance-based hiring is that it shifts the um, hiring process from what we call, uh, uh, what do we call it? My brain, my vocabulary server just crashed. It shifts the hiring process from what we call gladiator voting, which is thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, love them, kill them, right? <laughs> to an evidence-based thing that's like, oh, I have evidence that, he, that this candidate, she has created five design systems. Her first one wasn't very good, and then she improved it this way, and then she got it better the next time, and then the fifth one was amazing, and she's going to come in here, and she's excited about our challenges because we can talk to how ours are similar to what she's done before, but not quite, and she's really excited about that. So I can get her excited about the position, and at the same time, I can get excited about her work because I can see this path of her being able to handle the scale of our system because it's larger than anything she's ever done before. And that's really key.